Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top four reasons why your range oven door won't open after the self-cleaning cycle. Stick around to the end of the video for some important safety tips that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. First thing to do is check the user manual to make sure the self-cleaning cycle was done properly. All the different brands out there have a few things that you can try if the door won't open after a self-cleaning cycle. Look in the manual for what your specific oven calls for. You must let the range cool enough for the door to unlock. Turn off the range power for 5 minutes, then turn the power back on and reset the clock. This will reboot the oven control board. If it works, the door will unlock. If not, as long as there's no food in the oven, Restart the cleaning cycle for a short cycle, 15 minutes to 2 hours depending upon the manufacturer. Let it cool down again to see if the door opens. If you have the older style oven with knobs to turn, make sure they haven't been moved from the self-clean setting. The door may not unlock if the setting's been changed. Do not try to continue or restart a self-cleaning cycle if there are any error codes displayed. Next thing to check is the door latch assembly. It's what holds the door closed. The door latch assemblies usually have a hook that holds the door closed, a motor or a lever to operate the latch, and a switch that tells the oven control if it's in the latched or unlatched position. Most door latch assemblies are located at the top of the door underneath the cooktop section. Some are split with the latch up front and the motor and the switch in the back with a rod connecting the two. If the range oven door won't open after the self-cleaning cycle, it could be that the door latch assembly is bent or the switch or motor has failed. Depending upon what style you have, you'll either have to remove the back panel or lift the top up. Once you have access to the door latch assembly, visually inspect it for damage. If something's bent that's preventing it from working properly, you can try to straighten it out, but if it's damaged too much, then you'll have to replace it. If there wasn't any damage, it could be that the switch or motor has failed. In order to check them, we'll have to test them for continuity. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we have to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. The switch that's on the latch usually has two wires on it. It tells the control board the position of the latch. Remove the wires, then touch a test probe to each terminal. It should not have continuity. Then press the button on the switch. It should have continuity with the button pushed in. If it doesn't, then the switch is bad and the door latch will have to be replaced. Next, we'll check the motor, remove the wires from the terminals, and touch a test probe to each one. If the motor doesn't have continuity, the latch will have to be replaced. Many newer ranges will give you an error code and maybe even a test procedure to test the latch, so make sure you look over the tech sheet as well. In this example, you'll have to enter the diagnostic mode and press self-clean. This will send power to the latch motor. If the latch fails the test, it'll have to be replaced. If you need to order a part, simply go to appliancepartspros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Next thing to check is the oven control board. It controls the functions of the range. The oven control board is usually a computer board. It collects all the data from the sensors and switches and controls the functions of the range. It's usually mounted in the middle of the control panel on the range. The oven control board sends power to the latch motor. If the oven door won't open after a self-cleaning cycle, it could be that the board has failed and isn't sending power to the latch. There are a lot of different control boards out there, so we can't show you how to test them all. You're going to have to grab your tech sheet and follow the diagnostics or error codes to see if it's gone bad. In this example, you'd have to enter diagnostic mode, press self-clean, and follow the troubleshooting steps. This sends power to the latch motor. If the latch motor tests are good, but the motor doesn't operate during the test, it could be that the motor relay has failed and isn't sending power to the motor. If the relay is bad, the board will have to be replaced. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. The last thing to check is the oven temperature sensor. It tells the control board the temperature inside the oven. 
Oven temperature sensors are a type of resistor in which the ohms reading will change as the temperature does. They're usually a small metal rod with a mounting plate and two wires. Oven temperature sensors are usually mounted in the upper left or right corner of the oven, but in order to test it, you'll have to go around to the back of the range. If the oven door won't open after a self-cleaning cycle, it could be that the oven temperature sensor has failed. If the sensor is bad, the control board may think the oven is still too hot and won't let the oven door open. The most common sensor should read around 1,080 ohms at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If you aren't sure, you can always look at the tech sheet for your range. The sensor can fail in two ways. If the ohms reading is off, it could cause the oven temperature to be different than what you selected. Or if it's totally failed and you don't get a reading at all, then the range won't start. So set your meter to ohms. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms are coming in but you may need to set your meter to read the proper ohm level. Once you have access to the sensor, remove the wires and touch a test probe to each terminal. If the ohms reading is way off or you don't get a reading at all, it'll have to be replaced. Now here are those safety tips we mentioned earlier. A lot of people are still using aluminum foil to protect their ranges from spills and grease buildup. Although it may seem like a good idea, you may not be aware of the dangers it can pose. Firefighters respond to over 170,000 kitchen fires per year, and failing to keep the range clean is linked to more than 13,000 of those. On electric cooktops, many people cover the drip pans with foil so they don't have to clean them, but this can cause moisture retention, making them rust even faster. It can also block airflow, reflect heat back into the elements damaging them, or if the foil touches the element, it could be a shock hazard or start a fire. On gas cooktops, wrapping the grates, burner heads, or drip pans in foil can cause heat retention, carbon monoxide poisoning, as well as starting a fire. In general, you'll want to avoid lining the oven with foil because it could block air passages, causing heat buildup that causes poor cooking and increases the dangers of a fire. If the foil gets too hot, it could melt, damaging the oven lining or starting a fire. With electric ovens, putting foil under the element could cause heat to be reflected back into the oven, overcooking the food and possibly damaging the element. If the foil touches the element, it could become a shock hazard. In gas ovens, blocking air passages could affect the burner operation, causing poor cooking and carbon monoxide poisoning. You also don't want to completely cover an oven rack, as this will disrupt the airflow and cause cooking problems. You should only use a small pan on a rack several inches below the food you're cooking to catch drips. Due to these dangers, you don't want to use aluminum foil to try to keep the range clean. You should clean the oven and underneath the cooktop regularly to prevent grease buildup. So keep the foil off the range, keep it clean, and keep an eye on it while you're cooking. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.